All right, one of the things we're going to talk about now is styles of play to deal with singles. And when you start coaching a player, we'll, we'll attack it from the coach's perspective, and then we'll attack it from the player's perspective, and then the junior player's perspective. Um, we'll go coach's perspective first. When you're initially starting a player out, your your first fundamental is consistency. It's not about power. It's, it's just about getting the ball in play, and then working on the placement, and then working on the spins. The last thing you add is probably the power, power aspect. Now as you add consistency into the game, as a coach, <clears throat> what kind of personality are you dealing with here? Often when you play tennis, and, and that's what I like about playing tennis with my friends, is you discover what kind of people you're playing with. I mean, if you play with someone who calls a line really in when it's out, he's really fair. If you're, if you're playing with someone who's calling the line out and it's on the line, or out and the ball is slightly in, then you start to see what their nature is. And I think that's why people like to golf with people in terms of business, or they like to... I think that's why golf is a good instrument to seal the business. Tennis is like that also. I find that when you play people, you really see their inner person. Uh, for example, my wife is very... Um, <clears throat> She's not very patient when she plays tennis. She wants to go for a winner. She wants to hit a good shot. She doesn't want to work the rally. She just wants to finish the point very quickly. You know. Whereas I have another friend who likes to keep the ball in play, and that's his ultimate goal. He doesn't want to make a mistake. Keeps the ball in play. Keeps the ball in play. And that kind of melds with his personality. Now the interesting thing is you can have people that have personalities that don't match their game, meaning they're showing you something and you're seeing it every day, but it's not their personality on court. And that's their true personality. When you see their personality on court, that's their true personality. You can manufacture a personality. You can train someone to be a certain type of player on the court. But I think when you're doing that, you're going against the grain. You, you can't make a sculpture and change. You can't make good sculpture unless you have good, a good stone. You know, and it has to match. <clears throat> so my, my encouragement to you as a coach is find out what kind of person you're dealing with and find out what they enjoy and then mold the game for them around that. Now as a player, <coughs> oftentimes you want your game to be a certain way, but it's not your nature. And that's the problem. Like, you want to be Patrick McElroy, you want to be John McElroy, you want to be Nadal, you want to be Roger. <coughs> and that's a big problem if you want to be Roger because it's really hard to be Roger. But you want end points quickly, but you don't have the game for it. You want to be an aggressive baseline like Agassi, but you don't have the game for it. You want a certain volley like Pete, but you don't have the game for it. You, as a player, have to analyze what's your conditioning level. How long can you stay on court? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. What's your conditioning level? How long do you have to stay on court? How long can you stay at a point? Uh, will it matter if it's hot? Will it matter if it's cold? Uh, secondly, what's your best shot? Is your best shot a volley? Is your best shot a ground stroke? Uh, is it your serve? You know. And thirdly, what do you enjoy doing? Like for the past couple of months, I've been trying to baseline, and it makes me mental. I, it bores me on my mind. Okay. So as an adult player, you need to evaluate where your game is at in terms of. For me, it's like how much time do I have to practice? Because the more time I can practice, the better shape I'm in, and the better, the more consistent I become, the more baseline I become. And if I don't get practice, then I'm not a baseliner. I can't be a baseliner unless I practice. I can be a certain volley or I can be a chip and charger, regardless. Like it doesn't matter. I can always volley. So you have to find out what shot will never change for you. As a junior player, you you got do <coughs> you have to do it in steps. Start with the foundation of baselining, counter punching, <coughs> upgrade to aggressive baseliner. And lastly, you'll transition to an on-court player. But this transition to an on-court player will take a very long time. And in this period, you must have already had that solid foundation of ground stroke before you can transition to this all-court player. And the problem is, you know, like if you want to be an on-court player off the get-go, um, you spend five hours a day on your your part. Your points are playing five hours a day on ground strokes. You're spending three hours a day on ground strokes and two hours a day on volleys. You know, whenever you have a practice session, you're always at a disadvantage. So what you have to do is find your happy medium as a junior player. Go with your coach's advice for a little while until you feel like you've established what your identity is and then go with that. 
Generally speaking, all junior players tend to have the same identity in a region, and you have a certain type of player or style that works for your region. And you have to see what's going on out there. Because, for example, in Michigan, it's all about big forehands and big serves. It's a lot of indoor courts. It's a lot of faster points. In Hawaii, it's outdoor courts. It's slow courts. You don't have fast courts in Hawaii, very rarely. And therefore, you have a lot of defensive players, a lot of long rallies, a lot of moonballing, a lot of roping, a lot of things like that. So it's not about weapon development there, but it's about consistency and, and uh, dur endurance and outlasting your opponent. So you have to see what they're giving you in what region. And that's also another really important re point for when you're a junior player, that you have to cross regions and play all around, as many different people as possible. Because in Michigan, you want to go to other states and other regions to see what's going on and see how your game matches up in that region. Because that's what's going to happen at pro level later on. Adults, it's not quite as drastic. So in conclusion, for singles, find a game that matches your personality.